Hey, what's going on, movie lovers all over the world? This is your boy, Testify to the Music, a.k.a. Mikey Savage 21, bringing you another movie review. And today we're going to be reviewing the 2016 film, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadows. And I have to say, this is a perfect follow-up to the 2014 film. This new film, it stars Megan Fox, Stephen Amell, Will Arnett, Brian T., Tyler Perry, Brittany Isibashi, Lauren Lenny, and you have the respective voices of Pete Plozek, Alan Ritson, Noel Fisher, Jeremy Howard, and they're all voicing and playing the Turtles. Then you have Tony Shahoub as the voice of Shredder uh, when he's in the actual costume completely. Uh, you have Peter Vadalatamineti. Sorry if I butchered that name, but it's uh, Peter D. Uh, B. Uh, he's the voice of Master Splinter. And then, of course, you have Gary Anthony Williams and Stephen Seamus Ferrelli voicing Bebop and Rocksteady with Brad Garrett voicing the infamous Crane. So pretty much with this film, it's pretty much just picks up where the last film left off. Uh, the Turtles, they're still saving the city uh, within the shadows, still living under the sewer with Master Splinter still training. Um, and getting into some positives um, of how I felt coming out of the film and having a night to sleep on and everything. Uh, I like how it focused more on the turtles, uh, more so than it did in the first one. In the first one, it was more so about the human characters and the turtles just happened to be there. Uh, this time, the turtles were more up front and I'm glad that they made that. Uh, it made their personality stick out more. You saw that Raph, he was the muscle. You saw that Leonardo was the leader who's often conflicted. You saw that Mikey was a laid-back free one. And then you saw that Donatello was a smart one who wasn't as buff as his brothers, but he was just crucial part of the team just like everybody else was. And I like how, again, they made the personality stick out and it made it fit that character more. And it just served well in the story. Uh, and I also like the look of the turtles better. Again, this uh, goes hand in hand with their personalities. They made it seem more to fit each of their personalities. Since Raph is the muscle, he was the biggest and tallest and burliest of them all. But of course, since Donatello was a smart one, he wasn't as buff as everyone. And of course, with Mikey, you know, he was shorter than everyone because he's the youngest and everything. I'm glad that they did that. Um, again, this was better than the first one uh, when it comes to the aspects of those uh, the, of the turtles. Uh, next, uh, the portrayal of each character was spot on. You know, I felt like the characters were ripped straight out of the TV series, well, with the exceptions of a, a few of the characters, uh, which I'll get into later on. The dialogue was great. You know, the use of music fit and complemented each scene perfectly. Uh, there was lots of action mixed in with comedy, which is a, a huge for me. I'm a huge action adventure guy, but I love some comedy mixed in there as well, especially when it hits like it did in here. Uh, and then, of course, when there's tension in the film, it really shines, you know, and it really shows and really complements the scene going into the next scene, uh, especially with the turtles. Um, if you've seen the trailer, you saw how they're struggling with wanting to be out on the surface. And so the ooze that turns uh, Seamus' character and uh, William's character into Bebop or into Rocksteady and Bebop, uh, there's a formula that turns them into their, their animal instincts that we all apparently have because we all apparently derive from animals, uh, according to Baxter Stockman in the film. And so the, the purple ooze that they were given to, uh, that they were uh, received, essentially what it did is it just turned them into their animals and so Donatello deduced saying that if it can turn humans into animals, it could turn animals into humans. And so you had that inner conflict going on within them about them wanting to be human so they could fit into the world. Uh, now getting into some negatives about the film. Uh, first off, Stephen, Stephen Amell's portrayal of Casey Jones. Uh, I like Stephen Amell. He does a great job on the CW's Arrow. Uh, first, second season, great. Third and fourth, not so much. I'm um, looking forward to what they have coming up. Um, but as far as him being Casey Jones, it just didn't really fit. I mean, Casey, again, uh, he just, you know, and I don't know if this was um, the director's fault or it was just the, the, the notes and everything or what they just told him. Um, but his portrayal of Casey Jones just, you know, didn't really fit. Um, like when he was giving like real serious uh, sentimental dialogue, he would still be smiling. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, 
Uh, if, I, if I was in that moment, I don't think I would necessarily be smiling. I'd be a little more upset and, you know, not necessarily crying or anything, but I'd be a lot more upset. Um, so I didn't care for Stephen Amell's portrayal of Casey Jones. He still didn't take away from the film. Um, and then a little side note, he only wore the mask once. And if you've seen the trailer, you know, that's the one time that he wears it. The Foot Clan. They made the Foot Clan seem like a joke. An incohesive group that doesn't know what they're doing. They're easily knocked out by just being hit over the head with books or getting pushed into pieces of, of, of aluminum. It, they just made the Foot Clan seem like incompetent fools in this film. And Shredder, Shredder was threatening and menacing just like he was in the first one. However, Shredder was not very well utilized here. He didn't do any fighting whatsoever. He just would threaten people. Um, and Shredder, being the character that he is, he's always about being out in front and center. Yeah, he'll send his Foot Clan out, but once they failed him so many times, he sees that he has to take matters into his own hands. This time, he struck some deal with Krang, and it just didn't really plan, pan out like I thought it was going to. Um, and then again, you know, a few of the scenes, you know, were predictable, uh, especially with the relationship between Baxter Stockman and Shredder. Um, and then, of course, the last thing would be the lack of Splinter. Uh, Splinter was front and center again uh, in the first film, but in this film, it's like he took a back seat uh, since they had so many other other characters they had to introduce. I understand that, you know, that he's the, the you know the sensei and the master. He stays back, but especially when you get to the very end of the film, I, I find it very surprising that Splinter himself wouldn't be out there on the front lines uh, trying to help Leonardo and trying to help the turtles succeed and defeat. Uh, crane um, getting in my score. I'm gonna give this a 3.5 out of a 5. It was still overall enjoyable film again the, the negatives uh, Didn't outweigh the positives. There was a lot more positives in this film But I see what the directors were going for here This film was more so for the fans and for the kids of the animated series for that So for that I give them props up on what they did Again, it was a positive experience when I went. I loved the film. I walked out enjoying it. And now that I have time to process it, I'm enjoying it more and more. So again, I highly recommend you go check this out. It's definitely a theater watching experience. Uh, you can watch it with 3D or without 3D. Um, but just try to check it out in IMAX though. Um, but again, it's not what I think, it's about what you guys think. So have you seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows? If you have, post your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, if you haven't seen the film, are you planning to go check it out? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Again, thank you so much for checking out this movie review. I'm testified to the music, aka Mikey Savage 21 saying, peace out. Well, hello fellow movie lovers and enthusiasts all over the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Make sure you smash that like button if you like the review. It helps out the channel immensely. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll make sure I have a little subscription thing up in the top right hand corner. Make sure you subscribe so you never have to miss out on another movie review. Also, stay tuned because I have other videos coming later today as well. And below, I have annotated some other films that I have reviewed. Check those out. Again, post your thoughts in the comment section below on what you thought of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. And I hope you all have a blessed day.